Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've just had it down in my heart. I just had it down in my song. It just song. It just keeps coming up. Uh, he's a good, good God, a miracle working God. He's a good, good God, a miracle working God. Somebody over here ever had a miracle God worked a miracle in your life? Anybody thankful that God intercede, God moved, and God ministered? How about over here? Anybody ever had a miracle in your life? He's a good, good God, a miracle working God. He's a good, good God, a miracle working God. Can somebody just shout on the count of three, hallelujah, to a God who's worked a miracle for you? One, two, three. Hallelujah! Now you've just given faith and hope to somebody around you who needs a miracle. If there's anybody in here who needs a miracle tonight, I'm here to tell you he's a good, good God. He's a miracle-working God. He's a good, good God. He's a miracle-working God. I'm going to get the oil and we're going to rub this thing in until it gets down into that third level and fourth level. He's a good, good God. He's a miracle-working God. We need a miracle-working God. We need a miracle-working God. Why? Because there's a real, real devil. There's a real, real devil. And the devil come to kill, steal, and destroy, Jesus said. Jesus warned us. He said, I've got abundant life for you. It's going to take a miracle, miracle working God to do it. Because there's a real killer, stealer, and destroyer, the devil. I am here to stir somebody up tonight. I am here. I should have brought me my big spoon. My big spoon. I'm here to stir somebody up tonight. We got to get our faith alive. I tell you what, your faith is, you know, you lay, you lay down too long, you get stiff. You lay down too long, you can't, you can't maneuver the way you're supposed to. You get up and you get up slow. And you just start doing the Fred Sanford, you know, trying to get that thing working. I'm telling you what, we got to keep on moving our faith. Faith is like riding a bicycle. It don't go anywhere unless you're pedaling. Come on now, you stop faith, it falls flat. Faith without works is dead. Why? We serve a good, good God. He's a miracle-working God. His miracles are a response to our faith. Hallelujah. And we need the miracles because we got a real devil. I want to talk to you tonight about stirring up a giant killing anointing. I want to stir up a giant killing anointing in somebody. Maybe it's you tonight. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. If it's only one of you, I'll live with that, but I'm praying all of you. I want to reach through that camera lens and these cameras. I want to reach into your home and wherever you're at, and I want to stir you up as well. I want to stir your faith up. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You're going to see the pleasure of God. God's a good, good God, a miracle-working God. His pleasure is working miracles in your life. And he's going to respond to your faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for a miracle of revelation or illumination of your revelation. Lord, I pray this next few moments would not just be hearing words of a man, but we would have spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. Holy Spirit to our spirit, Lord God, I pray that we would open the door, we would tune in the channel, we would uh, uh, silence all of the distractions to hear what you have to say to us this night. We got real giants in our life. There are real giants trying to kill us. There's real giants trying to destroy us. There's real giants that's trying to bind us up. And we need a miracle. We need the manifest of the power and the glory of God, you in our life tonight, God. And we know that you respond to faith. You don't respond to pity, you respond to faith. You don't respond to our begging, you respond to faith. You don't respond to us being in a serious need, you respond to faith. And Lord, I pray that our faith would arise. Oh God, let faith arise in this place tonight that we would appropriate, take hold of, and benefit from the, uh, all of the atonement that you've provided for us in and through your son Jesus Christ. Jesus, that we would tread not underfoot anything worthless that you've done for us, but we would appropriate it tonight that we would see the miracle manifest of it in our life, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Stirring up a giant killing anointing. If you've got a giant of any sort in your life tonight, you just well tell him, go ahead, go ahead, you're, gonna, you're going down. I'm going to knock you down. Do some Mike Tyson bad talk. You know that negative bad talk they do right before the boxing match. You're going down. You're going down. You can do some of the Muhammad Ali talk, you know. 
you know, you're going to sting like a bee, you know. You may dance like a butterfly, but you're going to sting like a bee. You're coming down, devil, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Turn with me to Joshua, Joshua chapter 14. We're going to open the word of God, begin reading at verse 6. Then the children of Judah, they came to Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Nephunneh, the Kenzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old then when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back the word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever. Say, what I get tonight is going to be for me and my children. Hallelujah. Because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. And he said that these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old, Caleb said. And yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Somebody claim that right now. And be 85, I'm going to be as strong as I was when I was 40. Hallelujah. What God did for one, he'll do for another. I am just as strong, the strength for my coming and going and for war, both for going out and coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua replied to Caleb's request and he blessed him. And he gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kidnite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron, formerly Kircha, Arba, Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim, then that the land had rest from war. Stirring up, a giant killing anointing. This Caleb, 45 years earlier, had uh, stood there and they had come back from the spying out the land. You know the story. And he had told uh, uh, Moses what we have found. They had men, two men carrying just one cluster of grapes on a pole. They were so large. The pomegranates were huge. Everything was huge. And, and Caleb and Joshua was given a good report. But ten gave a fearful report. We look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Thus we must look like grasshoppers to them. They are mighty. They are giants. They are fortified. Put fear in the people and the spirit of fear cast down faith. And because there was no faith... God was not pleased and sent them into the wilderness for 40 years to wander. Why 40 years until that generation, that unbelieving generation died off? I believe God gave me this word tonight because there's somebody in here with faith. I don't believe God would have given me this word tonight if you came in here with fear and doubt and unbelief. I believe this is a word from Caleb. This is a word from Joshua. More importantly, it's a word from the Holy Spirit because there's faith in the house. And I'm telling you, I'm here to stir up that faith, as Paul told Timothy, to fan into flame that gift that was given to you. There's a gift of faith in this house tonight, and I want to stir it into flame. I want to stir it up so that there's a giant killing anointing in this house tonight as well. Hallelujah. So I'm going ahead, and I'm going to give you forewarning. Just like they tell you before you ride the rides, this is what's going to happen, and if you can't handle it, don't get on. Because once you get strapped in, you're into it for the enduration of the ride. You go to Bush Gardens and they, you hear click, click, click and they snap you in and things start moving. It's too late to get out then. There's been plenty of signs that said if you've got pain in your neck and if you've got this and that and the other, it's probably best that you don't get on. But if you click, 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 we're getting ready to go. We're going because God's telling me there's people in here with faith. And I'm here to fan that faith into a, a, not just a, a little tinder or, 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 or sparkle, but into a bonfire into a blaze, 
a faith that is going to burn loose the chains and burn loose the ropes and burn loose the bonds of the enemy and it's going to be the fire to fuel the engine of miracles working in this house. This is not Mr. Rogers' night at Christian Embassy. I'm here to tell you. This is not Mr. Rogers' night. I know coming in, I'm going to upset some people. I'm going to agitate some people. I know that coming in, and I've already dealt with it in the prayer closet. And I can tell you right now, I don't care. I don't care. I care about you, but I don't care if I'm going to stir up your doubt and unbelief and make you a little fussy. That would be between you and God. I'm just going to turn you over to the Holy Ghost. I left that in the altar place, hallelujah. So I'm not on assignment to come and rub some oil on the satisfied tonight. This isn't for just a massage in this house. Rather, I feel like I'm on an assignment to grab hold of the giant killers in this house and to release you into your next moment for your destiny. I believe we are at the crossroads. I believe we are at the point of decision. I believe we at, are at a turning point where we either need to act now or we're going to miss our moment. So if you want to do something about it, you ought to shout like you got victory in this house tonight. You know, not, not to impress me. You need to let God know. God, I'm here. Hallelujah. I got faith. I'm being stirred and I want to stir somebody around me. Because as I come and stir you, then you stir somebody else. You stir somebody else. Next thing you know, all of our faith will be uh, at a point of unity where the blessing's going to be manifest and the exponential authority and power of God is going to be seen in Jesus' name. So I didn't come to let you rest tonight. You may, you don't, don't lay back. Don't get your pillow, your, your little travel pillow around your neck and lay back, okay? We're not here for that. See, because uh, what causes you not to have anything is we've gotten too, too easy and too comfortable resting in this life. We're so busy going to church and watching somebody else do something. We just kind of like, we somehow or another think we're at the theater, you know. We're just here to eat some popcorn and drink some a drink and be refreshed and be entertained. But I'm here to tell you this is war college. Where we're at tonight, this is war college. We're in a real battle. There's a real devil. He is trying to kill you. He is trying to steal from you. He is trying to destroy you. I'm not putting fear in you. I'm stirring faith up in you. Because Jesus said, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You need not fear the enemy, but you need to learn how to fight the enemy. Hallelujah. So I've come to tell you it's time. I said it's time. It's time. It's time for the saints to get mobilized. It's time for you to get energized. Anybody need some energy? Well, the Holy Ghost can give you all the energy you need if you'll open up to Him. It might take a little shout. It may take a little priming of the pump. Back on the farm, we had those old hand pumps, and we always kept a gallon of water there, preserved there, reserved from the last time the water was flowing. Why? It may be stale, it may be stagnant, it may have something green growing on it. It really didn't matter. I just needed that water to start pouring down that pump as I started pumping it. And the next thing you know, that suction of that water around that, that valve and that, 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 that uh, 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 plunger that was going up and down, it would pull, it began to pull uh, from a river that was beneath there. You would not know that river was there from that rusty pump. You would not know that river was there of fresh water from that algae-infested uh, water. But if you would just start with what you had, the next thing you know, you had access to that river flowing out, and you could fill up gallons, you could fill up truckloads, because that river was without end. Hallelujah. Well, there's faith in us tonight. And because maybe we've been too relaxed and too set back, it is settled down. Well, I'm here. I'm the algae water. I'm whatever it takes. To, and I'm going to be pouring it in your pump. But if, you just, if you're not going to pump now, you're not going to get anything. But you've got to say, there is more. There is greater in me than, is, than on the outside of me. And what on the outside of me is powerful. But there's more power in me. I need to pull it up. I need to pump it out. Hallelujah. I need to reach out. Hallelujah. It's time to get energized. It's time to get authorized. It's time to get deputized. It's time for you to re be released in the power of the Holy Spirit to pull down every stronghold uh, that the enemy has brought up against you. It's time to get stirred up in your anointing. Because if we're not careful, we'll be like so many others and there'll be a problem in this church as well where we're just settling with one cluster of grapes. 
We're just settling with one pomegranate. We're just settling with a taste of what really is there. We, we, we won't, don't have an outpouring. We have a drip. And we're satisfied with the drip. We don't have a harvest. We have one cluster of grapes. But I'm telling you, we've got to get ourselves focused. We've got to get ourselves organized. Don't be too busy, satisfied, just watching others do the works of God. Let God begin to do the works in and through you. Hallelujah. Stop listening to everybody else's testimony and start coming up with a new testimony. My 15-year-old told me this morning around the breakfast table, he said, Daddy, he said, when somebody keeps telling you a story of how God did something back when they were my age, he said, adults tell me, when I was 15, this happened. And he said, that's great. I like to hear that. He said, but what this young boy wants to hear is what did God do for you today? What miracle has God worked in your life today? I want to know that God is not some ancient relic of old. I want to see him working in the lives of the people today. And I said, amen, brother. It happened to be a Caleb that was talking to me this morning at the table as I'm studying about Caleb to preach to you tonight. Hallelujah. God's getting ready to stir somebody up tonight. If you'll just let him, I promise you, somebody's going to leave up out of here tonight energized like you've never been before, and the demons are going to start running from your shadow. That's what I heard in my spirit. The demons weren't going to just start running from you when you started bossing them around. They're going to start running from your shadow, just like those spirits of infirmity would run out of the sick people they had inflicted when Peter's shadow would set upon them. They would run out and those people would be healed. Hallelujah. I know you're going to experience victory. You're going to experience the power of God. You're going to experience that Zoe life of God, that abundant life. Jesus says, I've come to give you this abundant life. I've come to give it to you abundantly. But you got to receive it. you got to receive it. you got to believe it. you got to receive it. you got to walk in it. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in the house ready for this? tonight ready for abundant life tonight what did it take about 10 seconds and praise the lord put your hands together lift up a shout and say here i am god here i am lord take me and use me hallelujah i'm here to call the enemy out see the problem is that there are some giants that are now standing in the place of your blessing your blessing is right there, but a giant is standing in that place. And that giant would try to impose upon you and, and let you feel and think that you'll never have that blessing. But if I can stir up a giant killing anointing in you tonight, that giant's coming down and that blessing is going to be transferred to you. Hallelujah. Because the only way you're going to get your blessing is some giants have got to come down. There's some giants that have to come down. And I want to stir an anointing up in this house tonight. Yes, I say it again, a giant killing anointing, a stone throwing anointing that David had, a wall bringing down anointing that Joshua had, a kind of anointing that makes you leave here tonight looking for a giant, looking for a giant. Instead of saying, oh, there's a giant over there, there's a bully over there, I'll, there's a bully over there, I'll, I'll walk on this side of the street. You see the bully and you say, oh, you own that side of the street? Today we're going to walk on this side of the street because you're, you're walking on my blessing and I'm going. it's time for it to be over. It's time for it to be over. Hallelujah. I say it's been too long. It's been too long. Too long you've been running from your blessing. Too long you've been uh, hiding from your blessing. Too long you've been making excuses, myself included. Boy, can we come up, especially us with a little theological training, we can come up with some of the best sounding biblical excuses known to man, but there's still nothing more than excuses. Enough, too long, telling folks that you can't do it because the giant's just too big. The giant's just too big. No, tonight, everybody say tonight. Tonight, tonight before you leave up out of here, tonight before you get up out of that seat and get into your car, unless you are totally resisting the word of God and unless you're totally resisting the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I believe there is coming a burden lifting, yoke destroying, devil stomping, giant killing anointing of, that's going to settle upon each and every one of us. It's going to release us to get up and to go out up here looking for the biggest giant in our life to bring down in Jesus name uh, where we're willing to say enough is enough enough is enough hallelujah Amen. 
Too many of the children of God have had a giant standing there staring them in the face. And you've run for too long. You've been talked out of your possession for too long. You've been feeling like a grasshopper for too long. You've been eating on one cluster of grapes rather than the full harvest of God for too long. You've been getting, just getting by rather than serving El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. And tonight, you got to stir up that giant killing anointing. You've got to get that enough is enough down inside of you. Oh, I wish I could talk you into it. Oh, I wish I could preach you into it. I'd sing a song right now if my song would sing you into it. But I pray with the guidance and the help and the assistance of the Holy Spirit that the Spirit of God is coming alongside the Word of God and the Word of God and the Spirit of God is coming to you right now and is saying you have had enough. Enough of the devil's lies. Enough of the devil's uh, stronghold. Enough of the devil's bondage. Enough of the devil's thievery. Enough of the devil's rule and reign in your life. Enough is enough. Yeah, you might be a giant, but I've got a giant killing anointing. Uh, and that giant killing anointing is going to bring you down in Jesus' name. I pray somebody, God, help me help them. Do they get up out of here this night and start looking for some giants to kill? You're just looking for a giant. Is there a giant behind this drum set? I'm going to tear you down. Where giants are hiding from you, you start looking. Where did you hide? I know you've been out here pestering me and my family for long enough. I'm coming. I, you in the closet? You, you, you in the back bedroom? You, you out in the pump house? You're coming down. We're not going to tolerate. We're not going to tolerate this anymore. It is time for us to act. Hallelujah. Start looking for some giants. Man, they, they, I'll tell you some places they like to hang out. They like to hang out over your health. Anybody ever had any giants looming over your health? They like to hang out and clutch to your wallet. Anybody had any giants clutching your wallet? You might know what I'm talking about. You ever had a giant overshadowing your joy? And every time your joys start to rise up, he smack it right back down. Because he knows the joy of the Lord is, is your strength. There's strength from heaven. There's strength divine in joy. So he got to keep you depressed. He got to keep you under that spirit of depression because if you get joy, you're going to get divine strength. And divine strength, the enemy has no match to it. Hallelujah. So he may be overshadowing your joy. He might be intimidating your next step of faith. And you're getting ready to step. You know it's what God wants you to do, but you're just intimidated because there's a giant says, you're going to fall flat. I'll see to it. I'll knock you down if you take that step. And there the enemy is looming over you. But I'm here to tell you tonight, it's time for some heads to roll. It's time for some heads to roll. David was not happy with just taking down Goliath. He took Goliath's own sword and took off his head and marched there through the valley up back into the king's court with a head in his hand. I'm here to tell you it's time for the headship of the enemy to be removed. If Jesus has given you all authority over all the power of the enemy, he has given you headship. Why are you letting the enemy have headship over you? It's time for some heads to roll and some walls to come down. There's just something inside of me. I've had my own battles as each and every one of you. I'm not exempt. I would say maybe, I'm not going to try and say this, but it could be possible that frontline people are at the head and maybe even have a little more extra attack, may have a little extra more warfare because they're at the front line. I'm not trying to say, woe is me or poor and pitiful me because God put me there and if God's with for me, who can be against me? But the reality is I understand what it is to fight for something that God has promised. I know what it is to have a promised land, but really to see some giants that are intimidating there and they don't seem to want to go away. But there is something on the inside of me tonight that says I've come to agitate the devil tonight. I am not going to sit silent and let him sit there and think he's on the throne of my life or your life or the lives of our family anymore. 
There is something in me that comes to let the devil know you've held our harvest too long. Devil, you have held our families too long. Devil, you have held our finances too long. Devil, you have held our health too long. Devil, you have held our peace too long. Devil, you have held these cities too long. Devil, you have held our young people too long. And tonight, tonight, you're coming down. Coming down. I said you're coming down. I said you're coming down. Hallelujah. I'm just going to preach to myself for a moment. You guys can turn and have conversation. You can check your phones if you want. I'm telling myself, devil, you're coming down. You're not going to have my family. You're not going to have my finances. You're not going to have my health. You're not going to have my relationships. You're not going to have my joy. You're not going to have my children. I don't have children's children yet, but I'll prophetically say you're not going to have my children's children. Do you hear? Devil, you're coming down. You're coming down. And I don't care what's holding it. It's coming down. I don't care what it looks like in the natural. It's coming down. I don't care what it feels like, it's coming down. I don't care how long it's been there, it's coming down. I don't care what everybody else is saying, it's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down. Generational curses are coming down tonight. Generational curses are coming down tonight. Spirits of poverty are coming down tonight. Bondages and oppression are coming down tonight. Coming down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, somebody's getting free right now. Matter of fact, somebody, somebody's getting free right now. Somebody's getting free right now. If, if that freedom is yours, go ahead and shout, Hallelujah! 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 I said somebody's getting free right now. We've been, we've, been, we've been training ourselves that we'll be dignified and we'll wait till after the service before we will appropriate what we were encouraged to do. No! Somebody's getting free right now. Somebody's tearing a gi giant, giant down right now. Somebody's slinging a stone right now. Somebody got a sword taken off a head right now. Hallelujah. You're not even waiting for this message to be finished, and I congratulate you. You're getting free right now. I celebrate you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because there's an authority coming in the word that is empowering you. There's an authority that you're receiving from the word of God right now. Reminding of you of your authority. And, and that authority is to cut and sever and slice and remove every attachment the enemy has on you. And you're going to your next level of promise. Hallelujah. See, the Bible says that Caleb did not allow the length of de delay to discourage him. There's a word for somebody. Caleb did not allow the length of delay. Somebody has been dealing with delay. You wish to name it, claim it, grab it, blab it, right now would happen, but it didn't work for you. One time you did it, it worked. Next time it didn't work. It worked on this area and it's not working on this area. You're naming it and claiming it and you're doing everything, but there's been a delay. And the devil says the word of God doesn't work. The devil can't do anything but lie. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Right? If he says this, it's a lie. So if he says God's word no longer works, you know it's a lie. God's word works. And Caleb did not allow the length of delay to discourage him. Rather, he looked at how long this stronghold had been there and he used that length of time as an encouragement for him to act now. He said, too long the enemy's been here. The enemy should have gone out 45 years ago. But I'm telling you, because he didn't, he needs to go now. Can I have it now? Can I have the mountain now? Is what he said. Amen? Amen? He basically said, enough is enough. Man, somebody got to get it in you. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Now, we know they went back in the wilderness for 40 years, and now it's been 45 years, so they've been there for five years uh, getting across uh, Jordan and getting things established and, and taking priority of where they were there, but now he's venturing out into Hebron, the mountain. And it's been five years, and now he's asking, Joshua, can I go now? We've taken care of the business here, but can I go now? That's part of the promise, too. 
You remember, he said, I had faith 45 years ago. And I told Moses that I was going to stand with the word of God. And the man of God, Moses, Joshua, you were there, you witnessed it. That, that Moses, the man of God, said, God's going to give you that mountain and give you that land as an inheritance for you and your children, your children's children. So now here we are. And don't tell me I'm too old. Joshua, I'm 85, and I'm just as strong as I was 45 years ago. I come in and get, in other words, he says, I get up and get down just like I did when I was 40. 40, 85, I get up and get down just like I did. Now I even go to war and fight just as strong. So let me take the land. And Joshua gives it to him. Somebody got to stop making excuses. If God can touch an 85-year-old uh, knee joints and hip joints and rib cage and neck joint and L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L whatever, some of you may grow some extra ones, I don't know, and can take and get them going and eyesight and hearing and I'm a clear mind on, on Caleb, he can do it on you. He can do it on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I claim it. I claim it. They say old age is, 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 is a cruel, cruel, cruel thing. I'm telling you, old age without the renewing of God is a cruel, cruel thing. But God said he would renew our strength like that of the eagle. He would renew our years. Hallelujah. We could be like the young men who run, and they get weary, and, and, and they, they run and they faint. But, but we can be renewed to where we can run and not grow weary. And we can walk and not faint. Hallelujah. I want to tap into the super uh, and bring it into the natural. I have a picture in my mind. I really don't want to describe it, and I surely didn't want to put a picture of it. I started to, but I figured at least I knew my wife would be grossed out. My wife doesn't like bugs. We bought some land to take the kids out, do some fishing and hunting there in North Carolina years ago. And we were so excited, we would take our chairs and our picnic table and we'd set it up and build a bonfire and the bugs in the summertime and the early fall, late spring, it was just really bad. And my two girls, they did not like the bugs. I'll be honest, I didn't either. But it's easier to pick on the girls. <laughs> so we go get a camper. Oh, if we just had a camper there. And I get some power run in, so this thing's a little powered up. Sewer, it's sewered up. We're glamping. So as soon as you step out of the door, blue, you hear those creatures. I think Edenton, North Carolina, probably produces some of the largest mosquitoes I've ever seen in my life. They didn't like the bugs. The other night, my wife, Pastor Radika, she came down. We, the next morning, she said, there was a wasp, something in the room last night. I said, it was a crow. I was just picking with her. I said, it was big as a crow. Yes, it was big as a crow. She was a wasp or a beetle, and it landed right on my forehead while I was sleeping. And I said, it was a horse fly. She said, no, no, it was a beetle or it was a, a wasp. I said, no, it was a horse fly. I said, I'm, listen, I'm prophetically speaking to you. It was a horse fly. I can see it. She didn't know I just left our room and found the injured thing on the floor still crawling around. <laughs> but it couldn't fly because it met Pastor Radika in the middle of the night. And it was a horse fly. So when I told her that, she's like, oh, do they bite? Do they sting? You know. And what is the, what has been living off of you? What, like a parasite, has been living off of you? I was going to get into the ticks. How they will latch on as small as a grain of pepper. And because they stay, <laughs> Sister Angie, she's starting to itch. And because they start living off of you, they start swelling and swelling until they look like a grape hanging off of you. You know what I'm talking about. Take that picture and roll it over to these demons. 
What is it that has been living off of you like a parasite for years? Draining your joy. Draining your health. Draining your resources. Draining your peace. Drain, drain, drain. Satan only wants to kill, steal, and destroy. I say it's got to go. If Pastor Odika in her sleep can be faster, she's beating Mi Miyagi with, with, the, with the chopsticks. A horse fly who's been trained in the art of flying and, 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 and dodging the, the whipping of a horse's tail and the flipping, flipping of ears, and, and, but yet in her sleep, pow! Come on now. It's got to go. It's got to go. Don't let that thing live on you. Don't let it lay eggs on you. Don't let it live off of you any longer. I say in the name of Jesus, every work of the enemy has got to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in Joshua, the next chapter 15, verse 14. So Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there. Shishai, Ahaman, you know, these are Hebrew words, they're hard to say, Talmai, it doesn't really matter. It was three sons of Anak who was over the giants. I don't know if you got this or not, but God gives us their names. I'm making a little fun to draw attention to it and to struggle to pronounce them because there's a reason God gave us their name. I dare you to name the giant that's standing in your way. The giant that's robbing you of your inheritance tonight. God had Caleb here through Joshua name them. Name the giants. You name your giant or giants, however many they may be. And when you name them, you need to declare, come down. I dare you. I dare you to name it. In the name of Jesus, come down. In his name, sickness, come down. In the name of Jesus, disease, come down. Name it. Name it. In the name of Jesus, cancer, come down. In the name of Jesus, lupus, come down. In the name of Jesus, alcoholism, come down. Drug addiction, come down. Nicotine addiction, come down. Come on, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pornography, come down. Bondage to any addiction, come down. In the name, come on, I dare you. I dare you in his name. Name, name that giant. Fear, doubt, unbelief. Come down in the name of Jesus. Name that giant in the name of Jesus. Pride, come down. Conceit, come down. Arrogance, come down. Doubt, come down. Unbelief, come down. Come down. Come down. Come down. Name him. Name him. Drive him off. Drive him and his offspring off. Drive them off. Drive them off. Hallelujah. You know you can in the name of Jesus. And get this, there were three of them. Three sons of Anak. The Bible tells us a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. It seems like the devil knows how to use the truths of God's word to his advantage more than Christians do. We will fight over every political, every economic, every neighborhood change. We will fight over every biblical translation to use. We will fight over the temperature of the room. We'll fight over the decibel level of the sound system. We'll fight over anything to be divided. And here, the enemy knows the power comes when we're in united. Amen. When we're united. And these three stranded cord is not easily broken, but guess what? It can be broken. Ask Caleb. He said, I move on the promise of God. I move on the promise of Moses from God. I move on the promise of Joshua from the promise of Moses from the promise of God. And he came in agreement with God's word. He came in agreement with God's leaders. And guess what? The power of agreement is more powerful than any obstacle that stands in your way. 
I need somebody to agree with this word tonight that God has given me to give to you. I can be your Joshua. I can be your Caleb. Or I can be your Moses. But I'm speaking for God. And God wants you to come in agreement with his word. And he wants you to drive out the giants, name the giants, run them off, run their inheritance off in the name of Jesus. He drove them out. Yara. Yaras is the, is the Hebrew verb there, driving them out, which means to dispossess in such a manner as to transfer inheritance. Inheritance is transferred through death. In other words, kill them. The giants had to die. So the inheritance that they were holding on could be transferred over to Caleb. See, the enemy has, has squatter's rights. He has squatter's rights. He is squatting on your health. He's squatting on your wealth. He's squatting on your peace. He's squatting on your children. He's squatting on your joy. He's squatting. And he thinks just because he's there, he can't be put out. But even if he has squatter's rights in a land of fallibility, even in a land of fallibility, death causes transfer of inheritance. So if you can take those giants down, kill them, destroy them from working and moving and living in your place, there's a transfer of inheritance coming over to you. And then Joshua 14 and 15 says, Then the land had rest from war. Now get this. Joshua 14, 15 comes before Joshua 15, 14. Get that. The land had rest from war... That's recorded before Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak here. Now, what's up with that? How does the land have rest from war, yet the three sons of Anak have the mountain? What's up with that? See, the head of the enemy had been broken. And the enemy was no longer unified and could not lead in a unified conflict anymore. Now... The people of God had to drive out the inhabitants over each of their allotted region. All of the promised land and that UN, you could, if I wanted to call it that, United Nations force, it wasn't called that. All those tribes of Canaanites and Amor, all of them would work together against any force outside of their region that would come together. They had an alliance. Well, when Joshua and Caleb, and they went in, uh, 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 the walls of Jericho, that was the the capital, you might would say. That went down first. That headship went down first. The Pentagon went down first. The, The White House and the Capitol building, if you were to look at it that way, all that went down first. God took care of that first. That didn't mean there weren't Canaanite, Canaanite strongholds in their region by the ocean. And there weren't Amorite strongholds and there weren't uh, these other Philistines and stuff like that. They, they, that. they were still there. The sons of Anak were still there. So now the people, even though the unified force of the enemy had been broken, now they had to go in and possess their allotment of inheritance. Now this is important because you and I, we've got to see ourselves in this picture here, Okay. Because Colossians 2.15 tells us that Jesus, with his work on the cross as the Christ, the yoke-destroying, burden-lifting, yoke-destroying power of God, right? He disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Now, here is this Greek word, diegmatizo, And it means, and that comes from, uh, made a spectacle of them. And what that word is teaching us, it means to expose to public disgrace, to make an example of. And he was using and playing on something that took place in that day and time, earlier than that and even later than that. But with the Romans, they really loved pomp and circumstance, and they were good at it. That when a king and his army would go and defeat an enemy that they would come into town and the, and the heralders would come ahead of them. And the heralders would say, we won the victory. That foreign nation is no more. Their gold is our gold. Their resources, our resources. 
Their expensive clothing, their extravagance is now ours. Their children, their laborers are ours. So when the herald would make that announcement, there were those that were trained in the pomp and circumstance department of parade that would set everything up, the horns, the trumpets would blow, and everybody would gather like it was a parade unlike anything you've ever seen. And they would stop their work, they would stop, they would let the fire die in the oven and on the stove, and the cooking would stop, and the washing of the clothes would stop, and the farming in the fields would stop, the oxen would go to rest early that day. The mules, the, the sheep, the goats, everybody got, uh, got off that day, and they would come into the town, leading into the town, and all the way through on both sides of the road. Then when the trumpet would sound as the king and his chariot was approaching, everyone would begin to celebrate and there was flags and there was all kinds of confetti and everything you could imagine and celebration that was going on. And the king would come as so many people wait for, what is it, the float with Santa Claus at the Macy Parade, that's the big thing or used to be, well, this was the big thing, the chariot with the king in it. Because tied behind the chariot was the defeated king who was bound. And he would be led, he would be made a spectacle of. This Diego Matizzo that made a spectacle of, of exposing to public disgrace. So everyone would see the king that was now the threat is no longer a threat. He who put them in fear, they will fear no more. He who stole from them is now returning back to them sevenfold. They are celebrating. So here is this defeated king bound, tied to the chariot, walking behind the king's chariot, paraded down the streets and brought into the public square. And in the public square, they would take the king and they would lay his hands on a huge uh, uh, wooden stump and they would hold his hands down and they would chop off his thumb with, a, with a, like an ax, chop off his thumb. And then they would stand him on there and they would chop off his big toe. And everybody would celebrate and they would cheer because they knew this one thing. That even though that king was still alive, that king would never wield a sword leading an army to fight against them ever again. He would never raise up another army. And he would never be able to run out front without his big toes and lead an army against them. That even though he was still alive, they celebrated because there was an example made that he had been triumphed over. So Jesus, having disarmed principalities, he disarmed principalities. He took the thumbs and the big toes off of principalities. That's talking about the demons. That's talking about Satan. Come on now. He's like a roaring lion, but he's not a lion. He's got no teeth. Come on. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So Jesus has disarmed the principalities and the power. He won the victory for us. Hallelujah. But, but, before we get to celebrating too much about a final act, it is an act that leads now to a continuation of action. Just like uh, Joshua and Caleb for five years had come into the promised land, they had taken down Jericho, they had taken down the next city, Ai, they had taken down the everything that was around the capital, everything that was around the UN forces that was uniting the whole country of all those different ites and all those uh, tribal groups together to fight un united. The, all that had been taken down for five years. But now they had to go into each of their regions and now they had to drive out the inhabitants because the inhabitants were still there. The three sons of Anak were still in Hebron there. And, 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 and Caleb says, when you're making allotment, Joshua, I was promised that. I was promised that mountainous area. I was promised where Anak was, the giants are. That's the land I was promised. You remember, you were there with me at Kadesh Barnea when Moses, the man of God, made that promise to me. He was hearing from God. God gave me that land. And when he went there, the sons of Anak were still there, their name. And he had to take them down. 
That's telling you and me that we can look at the cross and we can celebrate the fact that the enemy has been disarmed. The enemy is no longer greater over us than he who is in us. But we also have to go back to our allotment, into our homes, into our sphere of influence, and we've got to take down some giants. We cannot let the giants rule and reign even though their headquarters is down. They were raised up with nothing but nasty on the inside of them. And they do not deserve rule and reign in any area of your life. So just like Caleb, we've got to drive the inhabitants out. We've got to drive the inhabitants out. That's why I came here tonight to stir up a giant killing anointing. To stir up a a giant killing anointing. Look at this next one there. I want you to put your face. I want you to cut your face out and put it right there. I don't have a a filter. I don't have an app. I don't have anything fancy that you can tap on and play to put your face there. I want you to use your imagination. And I want you to put your face there. And I want you to name the giants. Name them. Don't be afraid of them. And say, in the name of Jesus, you're coming down. I'm calling you out tonight. I'm calling you out tonight. I am not putting up with you anymore. I'm not tolerating you anymore. I'm not making excuses to live with you anymore. You moved to the back side of my property, but that's still my property. And I'm not even going to allow you there. You got to go. You got to go. You got, is there anybody in here tonight can name some giants that's been looming over your life, that's been holding back, strongholds that has been causing you pain, causing you distress, causing you sadness, causing you sorrow, causing you setback. Can you name some giants tonight? Would you stand with me, please, as we begin to name them out right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to name those giants. Say, in the name of Jesus, you're going to come down. You're going to come down. In the name of Jesus, I'm not tolerating it anymore. I'm stirring up a giant, killing an anointing. I can't kill your giants. You've got to take care of your own giants. You've got to be like Caleb. I'm ready to go take care of my giants. i got my own giants to take care of. you got some giants you need to take care of. Hallelujah. Whether you want to take care of those giants on your knees at this altar or at the altar of your seat or walking around and, and talking to God or running, jumping, child, whatever, I want you to just, just move. I want you to just say, I'm not going to stand where I am. I'm moving. I'm moving forward. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm not going to leave here the same way I came. I, Jesus has disarmed the principalities and the powers. He has taken the, the main thrust of their inner energy and power out. Now I've got to go. I've got to go by faith and exercise some authority, exercise my authority over my health, exercise my authority over my wealth, exercise my authority over my family, exercise my authority over my region, exercise my authority over my future, exercise my authority over my children, exercise my authority. I've got to do it right now, and I'm going to do it, God. Here am I. You, you, you praise Joshua for his faith. You blessed him with years at 85 as though he were 40 because of his faith. Oh, God, I need you to renew my strength. Some of you need to start right there. I need you to renew my strength, Lord God. I've lost the energy to fight. I've lost the zeal to fight. I've lost the health to fight. I need you to heal me, Lord God. I need to renew my strength, oh God. I need you to renew my uh, uh, stamina, oh God. I need you to renew the clarity of mind, oh God. I need a miracle in this place tonight. I'm calling on a miracle tonight. You are a miracle working God. A good, good God, a miracle working God. You're a good, good God, a miracle working God. Yes, you're my good, good God, a miracle working God. Somebody, somebody's pulling on your miracle right now. Somebody's taking that giant down. Somebody's going to see breakthrough. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to see promotion in the name of Jesus. And if you don't know how to pray, let the Holy Ghost pray. Let the Holy Ghost pray. You can war in the spirit with greater accuracy than you can war in your own language. Hallelujah. Let your spirit commune with the spirit of God. Let the spirit of God commune with your spirit. Hallelujah. And angels are be given assignment. Angels are coming in to assist you. You're calling on Michael. You're calling on the legions of angels. Hallelujah. 
a heavenly language that they understand. They're getting their marching orders right now. You're not in this by yourself. Come on, let the angels of God come. Let the angels of God come. There's twice as many angels for us as there are demons against us. And you also got the Holy Ghost. You got the name of Jesus. You got the blood of the Lamb. You got the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Giants are coming down. Name them. Name them. Disease, you're coming down. Heart disease, you're coming down. Diabetes, you're coming down. Come on, lupus, you're coming down. Cancer, you're coming down. Kidney disease, you're coming down. I'm telling you, coming down. UTs are coming down. Cancers are coming down. I'm telling you, thyroid problems are coming down. Disease is coming down, coming down. Dementia is coming down. Hallelujah, Alzheimer's is coming down. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Sheila Bashanda. Go ahead, let the, your spirit, through the Holy Spirit, give the angels charge right now. Those angels of God are waiting. Those warring angels, they love to war against the enemy of God. They love to war against the enemy of you, a child of God. Let them come partner with you right now. Demons, demons got to go. Spirit of infirmity got to go. Spirit of depression got to go. Spirit of poverty got to go. Spirit of bondage got to go. Spirit of addiction got to go. Got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, pray in the Spirit, sing in the Spirit, sing with the understanding, pray in the understanding in the Oh, you demons, you got to go, got to go. You giants, got to go. In the name of Jesus, pull them down. Those giants that have corralled your children, take them down. Those giants that have corralled your peace, take them down. Those giants that have corralled your 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 joy, take them down, take them down, take them down. This is warring, warring in the spirit, warring in the spirit. If you war in the spirit, then you'll see it manifest in the flesh. First in the spirit, then in the flesh. First in the spirit realm, then in the natural realm. Take care of it in the spiritual realm. You'll see it manifest in the natural realm. Take care of it in the heavenlies, and you'll see it manifest in the earth. Hallelujah. 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 Tonight, tonight, tonight. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm not going back. I'm going forward. I'm not standing still. I'm going forward. I'm not going around the circle again. I'm going forward. That thing that has bound me, go in the name of Jesus. That thing that has loomed over me, go in the name of Jesus. That thing that has been robbing from me, go in the name of Jesus. Be broken. Be broken off of my life in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of the Lamb against you. I plead the blood of the Lamb against you. I plead the blood of the Lamb against you. I overcome the red dragon by the blood of the Lamb. I, we overcome the red dragon by the blood of the Lamb. I plead the blood against you, devil. I plead the blood against you, you demons of hell. The priceless, sinless blood of Jesus I speak against you. The powerful, resurrected blood of Jesus I speak against you. Oh, and by the word of our testimony, I testify, devil, you're coming down. Giants, you're coming down. Demons, you're coming down, coming down, coming down. You're not going to have my marriage. You're not going to have my health. You're not going to have my children. You're not going to have my grandchildren. 
You're not going to have my friends. You're not going to have my life. You're not going to have my wealth. You're not going to have it. No, you're coming down. Oh, get off this mountain. Get off this mountain. Come on, call on the angels. Call on the angels. Hallelujah. Break it, break it, break it, break it right now in Jesus' name. Break it, break it, break it right now in Jesus' name. Woo! Woo! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, give the angels. Give the angels. Give them freedom right now. Give them the freedom, hallelujah, to come in and war with you. Hallelujah. 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 Where the herald would go and blow the trumpet, and the trumpet was sounded. And the words that were declared, victory is ours, were heard. Once it was heard, it was then established in the hearing of that person. I wish there would be somebody here tonight who would have enough faith to believe that the warring and the word and the stance and the victory that we have in Jesus and the word of God working is so real in your life that you would begin to herald this good news that you would begin to blow the trumpet, let your lips be the trumpet, where you let out a shout of praise, a shout of victory, a shout of breakthrough, a shout of promotion, a shout of healing, a shout of, 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 of next level living, hallelujah. And then you would let forth the victorious sound, I am free, I am free in Jesus' name. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I'm double free double jeopardy. The devil can't come back against me. No lie of the enemy will I receive. Hallelujah. So I want you, if you would, if you got faith to do it and believe it, then these next few moments to just let your lip become the trumpet, the trumpet of the heralder and let you begin to shout out some praises. Hallelujah. Some thanksgiving to God, the King of King and the Lord of Lords who has won this victory for us. The King of King and the Lord of Lords who's parading down the center of our life right now, showing us, reminding us that the enemy has been defeated. Hallelujah. That the enemy is under our feet. Hallelujah. That victory is mine. Victory is mine. Yes, victory is mine. Somebody declare it. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Somebody declare it. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Healing today is mine. Somebody declare it. Deliverance is mine. Deliverance is mine. Deliverance today is mine. Hallelujah. Somebody declare it. Breakthrough is mine. Breakthrough is mine. Breakthrough today is mine. And now let us let up, lift up a voice of thanksgiving and praise and adoration and worship to the only God who is worthy, to the only King of kings and the only Lord of lords. Oh, lift up your voice and let us sound the praise. Let us sound the thanksgiving. Let us sound of adoration come. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We praise your name. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, oh God. Worthy to receive glory. Worthy to receive honor. Worthy to receive thanksgiving. Yes, you are worthy. Can somebody say, I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you for the victory. I thank you for the breakthrough. I thank you for the healing. Can somebody say, I thank you, God. 
what the devil meant for evil is going to be turned for good. My future is going to be brighter than my past. Can somebody say, I thank you, God. My future is going to be brighter than my past. Can somebody say, I thank you, God. My future is going to be brighter than my past. Somebody's got faith to believe it right now. The best is not over. The best is yet to come. The devil makes you think the best is over, but the devil is a liar. The best is yet to come. Can somebody say, I thank you, God. I praise you, God. My best is yet to come. My strongest days are ahead of me. My wealthiest days are ahead of me. My healthiest days are ahead of me. My brightest days are ahead of me. My greatest inventions and thoughts and desires and dreams are ahead of me. My plans that will make my life be fulfilled are ahead of me. Hallelujah. My destiny and my purpose is ahead of me. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Beauty for ashes. Anybody got any ashes? Hand them to him right now. And let him make something beautiful. Only God can do it. I can't do it. He can do it for you. You can't do it, but he can do it for you. Lord, I give you the ashes. You're going to make them beautiful. Anybody got any mourning? Your mourning? Give it to him right now. And he'll turn your mourning into gladness. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. You're going to go out of here. There's going to be a giggle, a giggle in you. I release. I just release. I never said that before in all my years, 35 years of minute. I don't think I've ever said it, but I'm releasing a spirit of giggle in somebody. You, a joy, a mourning. Uh, not mourning, but mourning being turned into joy. Just a giggle. You're going to start laughing. You're first laughing at the devil. <laughs> And you start laughing because you know your days that are numbered ahead are going to be good. It's going to be good. Because you serve a good, good God who's a miracle-working God. He's a good, good God who's a miracle-working God. I said he's a good, good God. He's a miracle-working God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, and amen. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Your name is great. Yes. Your name is great. Greatly to be praised. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Then Caleb left that meeting with Joshua. Now Joshua is an Old Testament name for Jesus. So he's a type of Jesus. So he, he takes his, his, his impartation of the promise from Jesus, Joshua. And he goes up into the mountains of heaven and he runs out to three sons of Anna. You've got to take the promise from your Jesus tonight. And you've got to go home and you've got to run, run out, run them out, run them out. Walk in the front door, run them out the back door. They don't have the, they don't have the, they don't deserve to leave the front door. Your, your dignified guests come and go in the front door and your family members come and go out the back door, I'd send them out of the bathroom exhaust fan. That's about where they need to go and blow them out. Say, you gotta go, go turn your exhaust fans off. I've never said that before either. Boy, I'm getting a lot of fur. They don't deserve to go out the back door. They don't deserve to go out the front door. Turn, the stinky stuff goes out the exhaust fan. If, and if you don't have an exhaust fan, I mean, you, you got one of those old, 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 old time houses where you had to open the bathroom window. That was your only relief. Go open the bathroom window. Get out. Get out. You're not living in my house. You got to take it home. If you don't take this home and, and act it, then it's just going to be another sermon that you got under your belt. But this is a practical word to live by. Amen. 
Did I stir up a giant killing anointing in anybody? Any, did you say, Sister Evelyn? Yeah, yeah, girl on fire. Come here, come here. Come up here, come up here. Come up here, come up here. Get you in the spotlight. Get you in the spotlight. You show them that. You show them. I'm moving this here. Y'all get this. Girl on fire! Fire! Let every one of us go out of here on fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus we would take your word and we would go and act it in our homes now as we go to advance your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.